Hello guys, congratulations on completing the previous video of setting up the Playwright project in the Visual Studio Code. And we are about to start to learn more techniques of Playwright automation. But before we start to do more automations, first of all, I would like to give some overall picture of the Playwright and what you will about to learn, as well as the importance of Playwright, etc. Okay, so this video, I will mostly talk about the introduction of the Playwright, why we should use Playwright, what advantages it can give us, and also overall picture of the Playwright, the fixtures. Now, these are what we are going to talk about now. So let's get started. So Playwright is an automation tool for automating the web browsers. Just like the automation tools like Selenium, Protractor, or also Cypress, you know, Playwright is also another alternative. And this Playwright, it is developed by Microsoft. It provides support for multiple programming languages. Uh, the native language of Playwright is JavaScript, okay? But it's not only limited with JavaScript, unlike the Cypress. So this Playwright, it is supported by JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, you know, Java, and some other more programming languages. So, which means you are not only limited to the JavaScript or Python to those specific languages if you would like to use the Playwright. And of course, this Playwright, since there are lots of libraries, lots of methods that are available, things are much more straightforward in Playwright when it comes to the automation. And those methods are same in regardless of what programming language that you use Playwright with, the methods, the libraries that you will use in Playwright are the same. So which means even if you learn Playwright with one language, later on using it with another language will not be difficult for you at all, okay? And this Playwright, it supports Chrome, Firefox, and Safari, those browsers. And yes, it comes with its own browsers. It comes with its own, those browsers, Chromium, which is equivalent to Chrome browser application, and Firefox, and WebKit, it refers to the Safari browser, okay? So all the major browsers are supported in Playwright. All right, and why we should use Playwright? Well, number one reason is it is more reliable and it is the fastest browser automation tool in the world, okay? It is much more straightforward, much more faster, and much more user-friendlier, so that's one reason. And second reason is cross-browser testing is supported and it's much more convenient as well, okay? And plus, setting up configurations, etc., are much more easier with the Playwright compared to other automation tools like Selenium or Cypress, Playwright is much more simpler when it comes to configuring cross-browser testing or parallel testing, you know, because it comes with its own global configurations. And yes, Playwright, it also has auto-weighting functionality, which is one of the disadvantages that you have in the Selenium and Cypress, etc. right? For example, in Selenium, if you have used Selenium, there were lots of weight issues that you would face. So that's why you were using implicit weight as well as explicit weights, right? But in Playwright, you do have auto-weighting functionality. So which means you do not need to explicitly use any sort of weights since it has auto-weighting functionality. And not only auto-weighting functionality, Playwright, it also has some other functionality such as auto-switching, auto-scrolling, you know? For example, in Selenium, you have faced lots of issues when you are dealing with the tabs or multiple windows, You had, uh, or when you are de dealing with the alerts, you would have to switch back and forward, right? Even in iframes, when you are automating in Selenium, you would have to switch in order to interact with the elements that are in the iframe, you would have to switch to the iframe, and then later on, you would also have to switch back to the default content, etc. So in Selenium and Cypress, it would be lots of issue since there is no auto-switching, auto-scrolling. But in Playwright, not only auto-weighting functionality, but also auto-switching and auto-scrollings are included, which makes it much more easier for you to, to do the automations. So everything is straightforward. And if for every single functionality that you want to do, there is always a method that's available. You just need to use the right method uh, to do the automation. You know, and yes, it is easier to set up and maintaining it is also much more easier compared to Selenium or Cypress. Just for the record, in Playwright, whenever you would like to do a parallel testing or you want to create multiple instances of the Chrome or Firefox, those type of browsers to, do, to be able to do cross-browser testing, etc. In Playwright, it is much more simpler. But in the other automation tools like Selenium, for example, to do the parallel testing, etc., you would have to do some additional, you would have to have some additional tools such as Selenium Grid, right? But in Playwright, we do not need any of those. The configuration, everything is much more simpler and much more straightforward. 
forward. So due to those advantages, I think we should definitely use Playwright. And just a little history of the automation tools as well. So right now, Selenium, it has the largest community in the automation, okay? In web automation, Selenium Row so far is the number one automation tool. But before Selenium, it was QTP, which is another automation tool. It's already outdated already, and it is a licensed tool. It was a licensed tool. And when Selenium came, when people start to compare QTP with Selenium, Selenium turns out to be much more simpler, and plus it was open source, okay? Setting up and configuration, everything was much more simpler compared to QTP. And due to those advantages of Selenium being faster, easier to maintain, okay, more user-friendlier, and plus it's open source, Selenium, it has replaced the QTP. And then over the years, Selenium started to have more and more larger community, okay? That's how Selenium came out to be number one automation tool. And now, right now, if you compare Playwright with any existing automation tools, Playwright, number one, it is much more simpler compared to other automation tools, and it is much more reliable, okay? And plus, it is the fastest automation tool. And yes, it is also open source. Since Microsoft made it public towards the early 2021, they made it open source, which means it's also free. So therefore, right now, Playwright has all the advantages over the other automation tools. That's why companies are also slowly switching from Cypress to Playwright or from Selenium to Playwright. We have seen the trend so far, okay? So I do believe in the future, this Playwright could probably be the number one automation tool. And when the switch happens in the companies, companies, they would need someone who knows both automation tools. If the existing automation tool of the company is Selenium, they need someone that who now Selenium as well as the Playwright. And hopefully you will be that person that can lead your company, lead your team to switch to the new automation tool. And plus it will also make your job much more easier as well because Playwright is such a user-friendly tool that all the issues that you faced in Selenium, you can say goodbye in the Playwright. Okay. And Playwright, during this course, we are going to learn a special package of Playwright called Playwright Test Package. Okay. This is a special package because this package is designed specifically for end-to-end -end testing. And it uses specialized test runner and frameworks. So it has its own test runner, which means like you do not need some other test runners like JUnit or TestNG, et cetera, that you did with Selenium or Cypress, et cetera, right? But Playwright, it comes with its own test runner and framework. And yes, it also has its own build-in reports as well. So which means it does not require any additional steps for you to configure the reports, okay? And it also introduced the concepts called fixtures, okay? Fixtures are a set of variables that reference to the specific type of objects. For example, in Selenium, you constantly use the variable type called driver, right? In Playwright, we also have something similar, which, which is called page, which we will use it for our automation. And in Playwright, those fixtures are, in this Playwright test package, those fixtures are already created, given, and you can just take it and use it in your automation. And yes, this Playwright test package, it has its own global configurations as well. So whether you wanna run it parallel mode or non-parallel, headless mode or not headless, headed mode, uh, maximize window, minimize minimize window, or different browser, etc. It is easier to configure in the global configuration of the Playwright test package, since it has its own global configurations. Maintaining it, configuring it is much more simpler. Okay, and additionally, this package it includes the built-in assertions as well. There are lots of assertions lots of assertion methods that are much more convenient for us whenever we would like to verify something in our automation test script. It is much more simpler in Playwright due to those assertion methods of the Playwright test package. In the other test runner tools like TestNG or JUnit, you probably have used assert equals, assert true, except mostly those two. But in Playwright, we have a lot more. So to verify something, there are multiple different ways, different options that we have in Playwright when we use the assertions of the playwright. And the end-to-end -end testing. So the concept of end-to-end -end testing is testing the entire flow of the application from start to finish, okay? Which also includes the API testing as well, okay? Yes, playwright is also capable of doing API testing, but it is mainly focused on the UI testing, okay? And it ensures all the integrated parts work together as expected. So that's what this end-to-end -end testing is for, to ensure that all the integrated parts 
work as expected. Since it's much more faster as well, it will not take too much of time to execute to complete the end-to-end -end testing. And this end-to-end -end testing in Playwright, it mainly focuses on UI, even though it can also do uh, API testing, but it is mainly designed for focusing on UI. So by using this end-to-end -end testing, we, uh, it, it can help us to verify the application's user interface and workflow from the user perspective. That's the whole purpose of the end-to-end -end testing as well, right? So that when we do the end-to-end -end testing, we can, the end-to-end -end testing can help us to identify and resolve the problems they can before they can affect the users. That is what the whole purpose of end-to-end -end testing is, okay? Testing the application from start to finish. And in this Playwright test package, we do have those fixtures that we can just take it and use it for our automation. So Playwright did use fixtures to provide reusable and isolated test environments. So every single test, they will be executed in, in an isolated environment, and it is achieved by using fixtures. But of course, all those fixtures, they have the global configurations as well, you, where you can do the configuration of the Playwright in the global configurations. And these fixtures, they simplify the test setups, teardowns, those processes, such as before and after, before method, after method, those type of annotations, those configurations are much more easier in Playwright. Setting up process or teardown process are made simple in the Playwright, okay? And these are the common fixtures that you have in the Playwright test package. So you have those seven fixtures, okay? But of course, for the UI testing, you don't have to know all those seven fixtures. Only those first three are more than enough for the UI automation testing. We have this page fixture, browser fixture, context fixture, you know, these are the ones that are used for UI testing. And as for the other fixtures, for example, like request based URL, we use them for API testing. And in this course, we will be mainly focusing on the UI. So these are the fixtures that you are going to learn during this course. And just for the record, I would like to give a quick short definition of those fixtures, even though we are going to learn them in details in the near future. This page fixture, you can simply treat it as a one single tab of that browser, okay? So, or you can treat it as the driver variable of Selenium. So every time one page, it represents to one tab. And tab, it is under the instance of the Chrome, right? So when you have Chrome browser, browser fixture, it refers, refers to the browser application. When you have browser fixture, from this browser fixture, you can create multiple context fixtures. Context fixture, it refers to the each instance of this browser application. For example, if you if you open two, two separate uh, instance of the Chrome browser, so that means there are two contacts that are created. Okay, later on in our automation, when we need to uh, create multiple instance of the Chrome browser application, that's when we will use the context fixture, okay? Each context fixture refers to one instance of the Chrome browser application. And inside this context fixture, inside this Chrome instance, then you can have the page, which is a tab. Those fixtures, we are going to learn them more in details. But what I'm trying to say is that those, by utilizing those fixtures, you do not have to create additional objects. You know, you can just take those fixtures and use them depending on what you would like to do in your automation script. So it, uh, in Playwright, with the help of those fixtures, we can automate the task cases much more easily. Thank you so much, everyone. See you all in the next video.